Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Daniel Mangina. Today is Tuesday, June the 23rd, 4 p.m. New York time and wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And once again, Daniel has done it again. He's brought us another guest. This one's a really, really, I mean, Dan, last week's guests were great. They were excellent guests. You actually managed to top it. How on earth did you do that? I mean, that's this, this is a because great guest. I am blessed to know this man right here. That's how I was able to do it. The gift is the gift. You have it. You have it, my friend. It's fabulous. So David Strickle, I mean, I, I never really thought I was going to have a chance. I think this is you kind of answering a, a prayer of mine, right? I never thought I'd have a chance to actually have a conversation with an Esther Hicks Abraham kind of a channel. And that's what David is. I mean, how cool is that? He's a yeah. channel. He's an author. He's host of the stream, the stream of David, excuse me, show and podcast. He channels the stream of consciousness that is the core of source energy. And he has created a spiritual mindset practice called Tia that now has practitioners all over the world. And his first book is called The Stream, Eternal Wisdom for a Better Life. And it's available, of course, on Amazon. So, David Strickle, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. It is so good to be here. It's so good to have you, too. And and I'm excited. This is going to be fun. But you got to give us a little bit of background first. So, how did all this whole thing get started? I mean, we talked a little bit about it before uh, we got going here. And, and it was a great story. So, give us like a little condensed version of that because that was cool. Sure. Well, what I now call the stream has been something that's been coming to me my entire life. And I remember uh, back to age six, uh, it, it, probably one of my first memories of just knowing that the things that I was being told were not necessarily true mm. and that I had an ability to sort of create my own reality. And I had a, a, a somewhat of an understanding of that very, very young, like I said, age six, a very clear understanding at age 14, because I remember telling my older brother, Doug, in 1982, when I was 14 years old, that we, we could have or be or do anything that we wanted to do as long as we believed that it was already true and that that would happen to us. I had never heard of law of attraction. I don't even know if that was really a thing at that point. I think there were, I know there were a few books written about it at that point, but certainly well, well before the secret book sure. before that was mainstream knowledge. And of course my, my older brother thought I was insane and told me to go read my Bible. What, what a surprise, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And, and he took his path and I took mine. And the good news is we both ended up okay. Very, very different paths, but we're both as adults, we're, we're okay. Good. So we were really poor though as children and, and to me, as a poor child growing up around a lot of upper middle class cousins and even a half sister that had very different lives than my brother and I did, uh, I was very envious of that. And I thought that that was the key to happiness is manifesting money and things. Mm. So with this, this inner knowledge that I had, I set about manifesting money and things. And by the time I was in high school, people thought I was one of the rich kids. I drove a brand new car. I wore the nicest clothes. You know, my friends had Rolex watches in high school and BMWs and and I lived in a two bedroom roach infested apartment in, in a really bad part of town, but people didn't know that, you know, I was the rich kid at school with all the other rich kids because I knew how to manifest the stuff mm. that I wanted and needed to you know, have this illusion of happiness as a kid. Well, I took that illusion all the way into my adult life and, and manifested my own businesses, manifested a, a very high paying corporate career, uh, you know, living in a million dollar plus home. Beautifully furnished, you know, Mercedes and Porsche in the garage and all the material things. I guess so the apartment was definitely in the past at that point. <laughs> yeah, very, very much in the past. Uh, very stark contrast. In fact, yeah. the house I lived in outside of Seattle, Washington looked like the entire apartment complex I grew up in. Wow. So that was kind of satisfying on an ego level. But uh, in, in, in understanding law of attraction, all of that time, I really did singularly focus on material things. Mm hmm. And then, of course, uh, you know, I got into my 30s and had so much of this knowing coming to me. I could no longer claim that I was an atheist that I claimed to be in my 20s, mm -hmm. that I knew there was something more out there and that it wasn't just something uh, that everybody had at the same level that I did. It was something very specific that was speaking to me. Now, I do believe we all have it, but I think mine was very, very pronounced for whatever reason. Right. So I would go see psychics. And a psychic in my mid-30s, probably around 36, 37, told me that I was a channel 
and she pulled out this, this big plastic binder. And I remember it was purple and it said Abraham across the front mm. and she opened it up and had cassette tapes in it, which even at that point was kind of charming because that was the time of CDs. Right. So you need to go get this and listen to this because you are a channel just like this is channel material, uh, very specific. And, and this is, this is a very similar message to what you've been receiving. Mm. And I didn't want any part of it. I wanted to understand internally what I was about, but the idea of me channeling and, and speaking to other people and being a spiritual anything at that point was just a big turnoff. I really mm-hmm. judged it uh, in my life at that point. Yeah. So I ignored it for years and years and years. And of course the book, the secret came out and everybody was really understanding law of attraction. I was really into that. And I was teaching that in fact, in my corporate career, Oh, really? uh, I taught commission salespeople how to be really successful in commission sales. In fact, oh. my most successful co- uh, commission salesperson was earning half a million dollars a year selling furniture. Wow. That's a whole other podcast, but yeah, Holy cow. <laughs> I can tell you how she did it. But yeah, I had a lot of really successful people that worked for me that went on to start their own uh, interior design businesses and stuff like that. And that was the business that I was in. But I, I saw a lot of people that worked for me that needed healing in their lives beyond just earning a nice paycheck. Right. And of course, in a corporate environment, I couldn't do that. My hands were cuffed. I couldn't get into teaching spirituality or law of attraction or anything like that because everyone has their own beliefs. And I just sure. do that. so I, it got a little frustrating. And the, the more I wanted to share this and didn't really know exactly what it was. And the more I ignored the whole spiritual thing and try to push that down, uh, the, the more complex my life got. I had all the material stuff, but I was unhappy in lots of other ways. I was a hundred pounds overweight. I weighed almost 300 pounds at this point. I was in a bad relationship. I was addicted to painkillers. I had a lot of negative stuff going on too. I had a relationship with my mother where she didn't speak to me for the last 20 years of my life. And we had a relationship growing up. She never wanted children. And she made that very clear. Mm. (laughs) So, so I fast forward through all of that and I am uh, freshly living in Seattle, Washington, uh, in this corporate job. I just got a promotion. And I bought a house at the top of a mountain and I had this car that couldn't make it up the hill every time it snowed. <laughs> I really, really, really wanted a Range Rover. I wanted to manifest a black Range Rover. So I'm out uh, in one of the locations in my job teaching, uh, you know, how to be successful. And one of the interior designers came up to me after the cheap training and she said, you understand you're teaching law of attraction, right? And I said, yeah, I know I'm teaching law of attraction. I just can't really label it that in corporate training, but it's mindset practice that I'm teaching here. She said, well, have you ever heard of Abraham? And I said, uh, I've heard that name. And I remembered it. It was, this was a good, you know, 10 years in between. And I said, I, I do remember that name. I know I've heard it before. I don't know what it's all about. You know, it sounded like Old Testament biblical stuff to me. And mm-hmm. she said, well, I think you really need to listen to them because I hear elements of that in what you teach. She had this box set of CDs. We moved from cassettes to CDs now. Oh, she, this okay. was the 2000, so we moved up. You know, the land, the time of MP3s, I'm getting handed CDs. So she hands me this box set of CDs. And she, she happened to have at her desk, which was kind of bizarre, right? She said, you need to listen to this because I think that you'll really like this. And so I you know, take the box set of CDs to be polite. I put it in the passenger seat of my car thinking, okay, I'm not going to listen to this Old Testament stuff, right. whatever. Right. Driving home that very night, uh, I go to turn into my neighborhood and there is a black Range Rover, exactly what I wanted in front of me. And the license plate said Abraham. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So I took that as a clear sign. <laughs> I needed to listen to Abraham. Yeah. They don't so, come much clearer than that one. <laughs> yes. And, and, and like Dan was just saying before we went out, I stayed up all night long. It was a week night. I had to work the next day. I stayed up all night and it was the original teachings of Abraham from 1988 oh. box set with Jerry and, and, and Esther channeling Abraham in such a way that it doesn't even sound like she sounds today. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it all was like, it was this amazing moment for me that all of these things that I knew had a name and a label and other people knew about it. And I felt like, you know, having grown up Christian and really kind of stepping away from that in my twenties and really feeling, you know, out of place in this world all these years, it was a very magical experience for me to find, finally find a set of teachings that were very in alignment with what I'd known my whole life. Mm. So from there, my life changed dramatically. I started meditating at a Kundalini awakening or what people often call a Kundalini awakening. Uh, in 2010, that this uh, energy ignited in the base of my spine that continues to electrify and throw, flow through me today. Wow. And when I'm really in high vibration, it's buzzy. It's it's crazy. Yeah. And I fixed all of the things I needed to fix in my life. I got out of the bad relationship. I lost the hundred pounds. I got off of Oxycontin and I did all that myself. 
Good for you. And really changed the direction of my life. And, and the last thing that I held on to, the last frontier, was my corporate job. I was in a mid six figure uh, job that I did very well. And it was mm-hmm. very comfortable, even though I didn't really enjoy it. I wasn't able to really do the teaching that I wanted to do. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was going to do. But I started writing all this stuff down. I started writing my first book that's out now, The Stream. And I knew that I had to somehow get a platform if I wanted to publish a book and, you know, kind of digging into all that stuff. So I started a podcast. Uh, and at that point I realized that, and I'd already been, been speaking the stream. I kind of skipped over that little part. I taught myself to speak the stream uh, over a few years, actually, uh, not in front of anyone. Uh, I knew that I could write it and then I knew I could speak it. Again, I was inspired by Esther Hicks channeling Abraham. But it didn't happen for me the way that it happened for her. Mm. She had this sort of miraculous, instantaneous experience where she started speaking it, right? It was almost a car accident, I believe. Mm. I didn't have that. I sat in my car, locked in my car in the basement of my condo building, speaking into my iPhone recorder for a while, teaching myself to do it. In the beginning, Mm. it was very forced. Uh, And then obviously when I moved from forcing to allowing – then it took off and I started speaking. And then by the time I could speak and put together sentences and the thought forms would come through and I could have just a, almost like a regular conversational type of speech, that's when I started the podcast, the Stream of oh, David podcast. And that, that was, was just 2017. It was not that long ago. Yeah, so and, very recently. Yeah, and, and I decided that I really wanted to disconnect from Abraham, not because there's anything wrong with Abraham, because I did not want to copy Abraham. I didn't want to be another Abraham. I was really, really intent in letting the stream be its own thing, whatever direction it took. Mm -hmm. And I'd even asked the question of the stream at one point, you know, why do I need to do this if we already have Abraham? And the message was very clear back that there, there are different channels all over the world. There always have been, there always will be. And we are here with our own unique filtration, if you will, our own unique message to connect with an audience that's ready to connect with us. That's a vibrational alignment. Okay. So, you know, the message was sort of get out of your own way and share this and the audience will come. Cool. And I did. And it, and it has. And it, it's been a, a, a wonderful ride. And it's, I feel like still it's just getting started. But it's. Well, it's it really is. I mean, you, you've only direction. been doing it for since 2017. That's what, two and a half, three years. It has just got started. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's cool. cool. That's fabulous. Cool. Exactly. I, I just, uh, you know, it, it's an exciting thing that I now am able to do exactly what I want to do all day long. I, 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 there's nothing like that, you know, and, and it took me into my fifties to get to a point where I allowed myself to do it. But like I was saying, that last holdout was that corporate job. I thought I had to have that, mm-hmm. you know, here I am. I manifested all this money as a child and here I am in my forties locked into this security blanket of this corporate yep. job, you know, and I was living in San Francisco. I was paying $6,000 a month for an apartment and $1,200 a month to lease a car. You know, I had mm-hmm. a, that kind of lifestyle but I thought I needed this security. And I realized that the last frontier for me was to quote unquote, jump out of the airplane, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just quit. Mm -hmm. And I literally just quit my job with no plan. I just, I had an unpublished book, no publisher, no agent, uh, and a podcast. And that was it. And so I just did. And then, then everything just kind of started falling into place. Uh, somebody came along and appeared in my life that, that teaches you how to do uh, online courses and things like that. In the beginning, I wasn't so turned on by that. And then I realized, well, gosh, if I really want to help people change their lives, I can develop a course based on all these teachings and based on what I've done for myself sure. and teach other people in a course environment how to do this. Absolutely. And I did. And I launched the course and people from my podcast started taking the course and they started changing their lives uh, I had, it was funny. The first two people that took it, one got divorced and one got married. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So one got out of a marriage that was not working for her on any level. And the other one manifested a marriage with somebody who she had broken up with. So it's kind of cool that that's the first two. And one right. of them works for me now. And, and yeah. has so more and more people came to take the course. And as we took the, as we did the course, it developed pretty quickly into from a course to a full blown spiritual practice okay because people are taking this this knowledge and continuing to use it and people are having spiritual awakenings people are starting to channel people are doing all sorts of things with this foundation of of what we call the taya practice tya stands for trust your abundance and we pronounce it taya and it's 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 now a thing (laughs) you know we've made it a thing uh people all over the world i have people in saudi arabia abu dhabi 
all over Australia, all over Europe, um, you know, because of the podcast have, have gotten in and taken Taya and they're Taya practitioners. And we've built a community around that now, which is a really cool thing. That's fabulous. And then Daniel, you got to tell us the story of how you connected with David to bring him to us. So, um, my good friend, Matt, who I know from a Dr. Joe Dispenza workshop. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, Matt's been, I don't know how long I know Matt, three, four years I've known Matt. Um, very, very good friend of mine. Um, Matt's been stumbled on David's work. I don't know the full story of how Matt got to David's work, but Matt just started talking about, oh, dude, I'm, Matt's Australian. Dude, I've, I've got this guy you gotta, you gotta meet, you gotta talk to. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And me and Matt are on the same wavelength in terms of how we look at reality, kind of, you know, get grounded, but we're still a bit up in the clouds, you know, we've got the kind of semi woo woo. And, um, I sort of had a poke around. I was like, okay, kind of tight. I like it. I like it. Read the book. I was like, okay. Started listening to the podcast and had a few conversations with him and met him on a, on a human level. Uh, we've been on each other's podcasts. I've been, had the pleasure of being a, on a couple of summits with him and I just love what he's doing. I think he's just cool. <laughs> he's just a really cool human person. And I think as a happy medium between the more traditional viewpoint that you might get from a channeled channeled information and the kind of the more grounded stuff that I, I think is missing in a lot of um, spiritual practices. What do you mean by that? What, what grounded stuff are you talking about? Uh, you know, just do a chant and everything's going to be okay. Ah, okay. okay. Right. But doing the chant allows you to move up your spiral and then when you ground that with action that supports where you are in your spiral, you can manifest a really cool life mm -hmm. and be human, enjoy the contrast mm -hmm. and practical things that you can do. I had a conversation with David about something that's been going on with my life just the other day. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh yeah. oh yeah. And he's able to give something really tangible, not some poetic idea. Oh, love is the answer. Look within and find <laughs> the source of the purple hearts of quantum blue. No, it's like, this is a challenge. This is what's going on energetically. And this is what you can do here three-dimensionally in order to access the true potential that you have three-dimensionally in order to have a different experience three-dimensionally. And that's my jam. So It makes so much that. sense, too, because, I mean, David was saying earlier how he asked, well, what do we need another Abraham for? I think you just gave the best answer possible to that. That's exactly why we need another Abraham. In fact, we need a lot of different Abrahams because every single new perspective just explains it to a whole new group of people in a way that makes sense to them. And that's really... Um, for me, it's like my whole purple brick thing, right? When you look at like faith, spirituality, the concept of a, of a divine entity, if you strip away man's blatant manipulation, you take away tradition, you take away the Chinese whispers that happened over time and take everything to its source, everything's saying the same thing. Everyone's looking at the same brick from a different angle. A friend of mine, one of my mentors, he says, um, the God blob, he calls it, like it's this multifaceted diamond and all of these different expressions of that central truth are what people see through the different facets that they look into. But we all receive that truth in a way that, that serves us and makes sense to us. And I think for me, in terms of, being able to really groove with channeled information in a different way. Um, David's up there in terms of creating that space for me to do so. That's fabulous. So, so David, I got to ask you after that uh, little secondary introduction that you just got from Daniel, because that's really what that was. <laughs> um, I, I've always wondered this about Esther. And so I'll ask you, because I think it's probably a very relevant question with you too. You are the person who is receiving, I'll use Esther's terminology, receiving blocks of information and translating it into English. And it has to come through your filter of who you are, what you understand, what you know. How much do you feel like what you are and who you are influences the message? And how much of it do you think actually comes through regardless of who you are? I think that, that that anytime something is being filtered through a human, you're going to get a little bit of that human in there. You just are because they always say they are limited to my intellect and vocabulary. First of all, mm -hmm. now, I'm not going to start speaking Mandarin and channeling. channeling. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's me getting information because they, they are not human. 
Mm -hmm. And my understanding of the energetic realm is it's not nearly as complex as we like to make it. I know a lot of people like to make it very woo woo and have all these different angelic figures and things like that. I always get myself in trouble because the stream will say, eh, that's all human creation and there's no judgment about it. It's fine. Those, those are tools that humans have created to connect and it's great. There's mm -hmm. lots of those. I want to strip all that stuff away. And an interesting thing about me is that I was brought up in Christianity, but I never bought into it. Mm -hmm. One, because I had this other information coming to me. And another is because I'm gay and I knew I was gay when I was a little kid. And I grew up in a church that told me that what I was was wrong. But oh, the information that I got that felt very loving and guided me through everything said that what I am or who I am is not wrong. Mm -hmm. So that was not congruent with, with the religious belief. So I tuned all that out. And yeah, then when hard, I got a pretty hard decision to make there. Which one am I going to listen to? Am I going to listen to the ones who think that I'm full of crap or am I going to listen to the ones who think I'm actually pretty good? Uh, geez, I don't know. I have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the gift of my childhood, the fact, you know, my father left when I was six, my mother shut down right after that. This was 1975 when I was six years old, my mother shut down and, and sort of retreated to her bedroom for the rest of her life and said, I never wanted children. I never wanted you. You know, at one point I was a teenager. She said, why don't you kill yourself? I'm like, oh, wow. no. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that, but thanks anyway. And so we didn't really have a relationship. So I didn't have that parental guidance guiding me to a belief system. I was left to my own devices. And I know that can go, you know, lots of different ways for me. The right, the right way for you, apparently, apparently. Yeah, it worked really well for me at all. Ultimately. I mean, I had Rocky. Yeah. I certainly had a lot of Rocky things because of that sure. childhood, but ultimately it served me and now I'm able to appreciate all of it. But what it did for me is it made me really go deep into my own connection oh, yeah. and really develop my own belief system based on that connection. So I've never really been influenced by any mainstream spiritual or religious teachings at all. So you're not having that as part of the filtration where the stream comes through. And right away when I did the podcast, I committed to, to diving into the most difficult topics. So we dove into racism we dove into abortion wow. we dove into transgender people we dove into the the meatiest things right off the bat i thought i'm just going to rip off the band-aid and dive into the most difficult things and then because you know if people want to be more flowery and woo-woo with it we can go there but you know let's talk about the most difficult topics that we have in sure. life because i'm all about solving things mm. you know, i believe we have problems we have contrast in our lives so that we can create something new in the solving of them or the evolving away from them. And that's how all creation occurs. Everything is a solution to a perceived problem. Everything. That's why we have problems. So that's what I've said about doing is I want to solve this. I, I hit walls with, with law of attraction and a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. There were certain things that I could manifest with ease. Money was one of them. Material things was certainly one of them. Um, Friendships were difficult for me for a very, very long time because mm -hmm. I'm very different in the way that I think about things. And eventually in a friendship, we get to that point where we're talking about something deep and they think I'm insane, you know? Mm -hmm. So friend, manifesting friendships, manifesting uh, a loving, uh, romantic relationship. That took me 51 years to do that. Wow. Uh, you know, there's lots of things where I sort of hit a block and I realize that there is work to be done in our lives mm -hmm. to release these blocks. These blocks are rooted somewhere and, right. and, the idea of just get happy and you get everything you want is true, but who does that? You know, yeah, who it's gets not happy easy. We're happy all the time, you know, and that's that's where that whole polarity message came from. That that right. we're all impacted by polarity right. by design. We're going to go down in vibration sometimes, no matter what. And what we do or do not do when we're down there is what the practice that I created is all about. Because you're going to go down. Okay. So how are you going to utilize that, that what we consider negative time to your favor? So to get back to answering your question, my intentionality behind the stream is to have as little filtration as possible. Yeah. Source thought, source thought, source thought, even if it gets me in trouble, even if it were to get me killed at some point, which it could in certain places, of course, source thought, consciousness, this is, this is how it is. And you might not like it. It may not be what you want to hear. But it's meant to be constructive. It's meant for you to go deeper in your life and really look at something and figure out how to solve this problem. It's not, um, you know, somebody, I, I have somebody that's followed me from the beginning and she's in my mastery program now and she's a big stream fan and she's a big Abraham fan. I said, so what's, you like both. So what's the difference for you? Mm -hmm. And she said, if I want a luscious magic carpet ride, I will listen to Abraham <laughs> and, I, and it serves me.
And if I want somebody to kick me in the ass and give me tools and tell me exactly how to fix the problem, I'm going to listen to the stream. Cool. <laughs> I love so, it. And I thought, you know what? That's cool because they both have a purpose. Sure. Absolutely. That is both have a fabulous. Purpose. And, you know, the stream is not just about that, but it's, it's not, um, you know, you, you, you will see that it, it, it's, it's, it's not as magical as, as, as some channeling is. And it's also not as, um, Oh, but I love that. I channel. love that. I, I think that's cool so much better to have that yeah. kind of, of, I don't know. I hesitate to call it realism because reality has a certain meaning for most people that doesn't necessarily fit this, but it's the best word I can think of. It, it's grounded earth. I don't, I don't know what to call it, but it, it, it just feels more real to me to mm. just get into the meat and potatoes of it. That, that's what it, I've tried to do with this show um, mm. and with a certain degree of success. And I, I love that. I mean, I that's great. Th- th- there's no holds, pun- uh, there, there, there's no punches held in that kind of a scenario. It's just, okay, let's just deal with whatever it is. I love that. That is fabulous. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the fluff is there to make us, to, to have us turn in, to tune in, I'm sorry, and, and to, to have that kind of warm feeling from listening to something and subscribing sure. to it and expand your consciousness. And then it seems like people sometimes get to a place to where they just need more. They need to go in and do more work and they need more depth. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, you know, that's why we're all here doing this thing. There's no con- competitiveness and channeling. If you're really channeling source, you know, that you're not worried about the ego driven competition. Ego is part of being human. And I certainly have one. I'm not going to pretend like I do not, sure. but you know, so the, the, the ego and balance is what I'm all about. You know, allow your ego to serve you and believing that you can and do and, and will and all of those sorts of things, but don't allow your ego to sort of go over the cliff with being superior or being a guru or needing to be obeyed or any of that stuff. And one of the things I love that the stream always says uh, about being worshiped or obeyed, they, they say, uh, you know, we're the source of all creation. We do not need you to worship us. <laughs> Good. I like that. <laughs> uh, it, was like, it was the first time it came out. I, I remember hearing it back. It was like, why would we need you to worship us? We're the source of all creation. We need that. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really, really cool. When that I heard that. Ah, yeah, that's right. All right. Well, if you're willing, let's uh, let's let you do your thing and let's have a little conversation with the stream. Let's do it. All right. We are here. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. I am for sure. I, I'll speak for listeners in that sense. I, I think we're all glad to have you here. We we understand that, 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 that this is a, a high vibrational interaction and, and, and we understand that, that, that you are bursting with questions. It's funny too, because I, I attended one Abraham workshop and I did have a couple of questions and I got there and I, I thought to myself, you know, all my questions are already answered. I don't really need to ask them. So here I am. I have this opportunity to ask questions and I don't even have a first question coming to my mind, <laughs> which is unusual for me. Um, I'm going to ask you one question that I did have in mind when I was going to bring it up with Abraham, j- just because it's, it's a curiosity for me. Um, because we talk about the law of attraction. Like, like attracts like, or as Abraham says it, that which is like unto itself is drawn. Okay, so how does magnetism work? Because with magnetism, if you have two north poles of a magnet, they, they repel each other. It's the north and south ends that attract. So how does that work? How, how, how do we understand that from a law of attraction perspective? There is negative attraction and there is positive attraction. There, there, is, there is a repellent quality in the law of attraction. And the repellent quality in the, in the law of attraction is turning your focus to what you want as opposed to what you do not want. And, and you always have that choice. The, the idea of, of observing something that you do not want and through trial and error, eventually coming to understand that focusing on that which you don't want is only going to attract more of it. The, the, the polarity in that and the way this mimics magnetism as you speak once you finally understand how the law works and you've got something that is a scenario that you do not want and you turn your focus to the solution of, you are then repelling it. It, it operates the same. You, you are simply seeing it a, 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 as a different type of force, but your force of attraction operates exactly the same. So if there's something that you're looking to repel, 
your focus is, is, is your power is in turning your focus to what you want as opposed to what you're not wanting. So I hear a little bit of what seems like to me a difference between what you're saying and what Abraham has to say, because Abraham has made a very clear point that this is an attracting universe. It's not a pushing or a repelling universe, but you're talking about a repel type of thing going on. So where's my confusion there? Can you, can the, the repelling is, is, is a set of words that, that we are utilizing in David's vocabulary to, to, to speak of solving, changing, evolving, moving on from. That, that is how you repel things. You, you are not going to, to think about something that you do not want and stop it from coming to you in a repellent manner. Mm -hmm. But you are comparing this to magnetism and, and, and the opposite of magnetism is, is, is repelling. And, and, and you are looking to repel something, a condition that you do not want. The recipe for that is to set your sights on the solution of what you do want. And yeah, that is a repelling quality in law of attraction. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. Too. Attracting, I, I'll, I'll just do this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, we have used the terminology before that when you're troubled with your lawn and you have a lot of weeds coming up through, through your lawn, the, 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 the way to get rid of the lead, weeds from your lawn is, is to have a healthier lawn. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, the thing that you want there, which is the grass. And of course, nature knows no difference. This is your intentionality as, as a lawn owner, if you will. Right. You want grass in your lawn instead of weeds. Your intentionality is toward that. You, you are going to grow a healthier lawn and focus on that as opposed to repelling weeds. When your your focus is repelling weeds, you, you most likely are going to attract more. In fact, you will if that is your focus. Okay. So I, now, now that I've touched on some of the, the theory that's always kind of interesting to me, let's get into some of the more deep um, the meat and potato type stuff because David was telling us before that that's something that you get into very, very much. And I like that. So right now here in the United States where I'm located, um, we're dealing with three fairly major things from most people's perspective um, has mostly, they have mostly a negative quality to them. Although there is some hope associated with each one of them. There's the um, virus pandemic. There are the racial tensions and there is a current um, crashed economy that's trying to recover. And each of those three things are, they're impacting a lot of people's lives and a lot of people are afraid because of them. And, and a lot of people are angry because of them. And it, there's like this wide range of emotion, largely negative, but with some degree of hope attached to it. And I, I'm not even sure where I want to go in terms of a question, but just kind of talk about one or all of those for a moment from your perspective. The, 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 the root of all of those is the same exact thing. The root of all of those is fear. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the pandemic and, and, and we, we were invited to, to speak many times via David regarding the pandemic at the very beginning of it. And we are not in the business of predicting a future because there are endless possibilities for future that are always in flux based on the current vibration of the collective. What we did share is, is that based on your current vibration, the pandemic, the, the more fearful the collective was of the pandemic, the, the larger it would grow in, in magnitude and severity. And you saw that came to pass. And in and, and, and the, the fear-based expansion of the pandemic caused the fear-based contraction of the economy. The, 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 the negative mindsets that were swirling around regarding the, the stressors of the, the pandemic and the stressors of the economy highlighted a, another negative scenario that was already very alive in, in, in society. And, and, and an event occurred that is not unlike events that have been occurring for a very, very long time in, in your society, but it was highlighted because of the amped up fear driven anger based energy that, that caused an eruption that ultimately can lead to a departure from fear and a focus on solutions and actually move the, the solving of that perceived problem forward significantly for humanity. Talk the, about that process too, because I mean, I, first of all, I'm loving what I'm hearing, um, but I don't want to put my stuff into, I want your stuff to come out. So talk about that solution based uh, uh, development that goes on there. Cause that to me is like the ultimate and fascinating. The, 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 the thing to understand, if you were hearing our words shared via David for the first time, the thing to understand is that as a soul consciousness being, and you are all what we, what we term 
independent strands of soul consciousness beings who are collective that are ultimately all part of that, which we are, Mm -hmm. we are all connected and you are all connected as a collective on planet earth of human beings at this, this time. And of course that reverberates out from there. Your desire in coming to physical is to come and experience a physical version of the energetic realm, a physical expression. And and in the, the case of the brand of planet earth, you are desiring to come and have an earthly encounter, an earthly experience that is very temporary compared to the wholeness of who you are. And, and you understand from that perspective that you are going to come and discern preferences for physical aspects that you get to come and, and absolutely enjoy as an ego-driven physical being. Mm-hmm. But your path to enjoying those things is, is also going to be peppered with polarity. It, driven by polarity and, and, and what you consider the negative polarity are the things that you discern is not your preference, your own human judgment, which you all have. And in discerning things is not your preference. You, you create an opportunity to create something new, to, to evolve beyond it, to move past it, to, to see it from a different light, to solve the problem, to create something new, whether it is a condition in your life or a physical actual creation a human made creation to solve that problem. That new creation that physical beings create is expansion. That expansion is your expansion as a strand of soul consciousness. You expand as a human being. More importantly, you expand as a soul consciousness being and your expansion as a strand of soul consciousness contributes to the expansion of the collective, which contributes to the expansion of that, which we are the entire universe. The entire universe is an expansive entity and it's all created via experiencing things that are not a preference and creating something based on that experience of not a preference in every single physical environment. That is a common thread through all physical creation. So that is why you come to your lives on planet earth. And the reason that you have pandemics is to eventually solve the pandemic and expand as a collective in the process. You may be hearing these words and, and thinking, what about those that cross over to their completed state? Those that, that lose their lives as a result of the pandemic are those that lose their livelihoods as a result of the, the, the economic collapse. The, the loss of a life is not what you judge it as as a human being. Your ego is overshadowing the, much of your eternal wisdom when you are here on planet Earth. And that is by design so that you can come here and have this contrasting experience. If you come all knowing and all seeing as you truly are in your eternal state, you are not going to have what we would consider a flavorful human experience. You are going to know from day one how to manifest everything that you want. You're going to manifest all of it. And there's going to be no point in your being here. And your life is going to be cut very short. And you do see examples of that. And these are the ones that are born with terminal illnesses that are considered highly enlightened with a very few years behind them. You have examples of this. But those of you that, that, that choose to keep moving through your lives and solving your problems and overcoming your obstacles, you are expanding in that process. And, and, and this idea that has been created throughout humanity as a function of society building, very fear-based society building function, is to fear pain and to fear controversy and to fear death and to fear all of these things. There is truly nothing for you to fear ever, ever. And, and, and the idea of death, understand that you are an eternal being and, and, and you are going to have opportunities for physical experiences into infinity. And you have. So when you start viewing your human experience as something that's like a brief weekend trip, suddenly you can take the pressure off of this life that you're in. And in the idea of death is not such a big deal for you or even your loved ones. You can actually come to a point where you appreciate whatever their life experience is, even if it's not your preference. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very different way of living life, but it's how humanity originally in the develop of humanity for a very long span of time in earthly years lived their lives. And then you moved into this era of, 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 of society building and, and having leaders take over and, and, and provide a set of rules and then labeling it a religion and, and then labeling dire consequences for not following it and telling you all how to live your lives, even though you all understand on some level that your true desire is freedom and joy and making your own choices and not living a templated lifestyle at all. Mm, yeah, Absolutely. Boy, there's so many different uh, question lines here that I could follow that you, you just hit some fabulous 
points there. I want to ask something that was actually one of the questions that I was going to raise with Abraham because you, you touched on it so adeptly here. The question about expansion. Uh, for me, my question is, I, I've heard all of these ideas about you're expanding when you're doing this. You're, this is what expansion is all about. What I don't have a clear idea of is what exactly is expansion? What What is the substance that's expanding? I mean, we think of a, an expansion like a balloon that expands or something like that. What, what's what's doing the expanding? Understand that that the, 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 the core of the universe is energetic. Okay. We refer to it quite simply as the energetic realm. Beyond physical, there is an energetic realm. And the energetic realm is comprised of thought, of consciousness. Consciousness being energetic is either expanding through new experiences, new creations, or it's not. It, it, it would be contracting, and, and, and your universe would, would cease to be, mm -hmm. as you know it. There, there is far more than what you may consider your universe out there. There, there. there are things that we could describe to you, not in great detail because there are no human words for it, that, that, that are far more and far greater than, than what humanity has began to grasp. But it's all a wormhole, if you will. Your particular life, your strand of consciousness and your existence is a mirror of all of it into infinity. And it, it, it does not stop. And so the expansion that is created is the consciousness expansion from these experiences. Uh -huh. That's when, why when, when someone comes and, and visits with us and wants us to predict the future, saying you are all knowing and all seeing, tell us about the past or tell us about the future. Yeah. The, the reason that we cannot do that in, in any sort of way that is meaningful is because it is all expanding. It is all continually fluctuating. This is true for everything that has ever happened and everything that is ever going to happen because it is all happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is consciousness. It, it is not in linear time like you were living in planet Earth. That may be hard to grasp as a human being having this very temporary human experience. But in truth, th th there is no set future or past for any of you. And that works in this wormhole the same way in your physical lives. You, you all have these stories that you like to tell about your childhood. David was recounting one before he came in. And he tells this story to illustrate from his perspective what he went through to get to where he is. If he were to internalize that story from a victim mindset, he would continue to attract things of that unwanted nature to him because of his focus. He has learned to heal that and solve it and only shares it for illustration of, of, of where he came from. But you, many of you do this. You have traumatic instances, scenarios that you hearken back to, and you tell the same negative stories over and over and over again, and you don't heal them that way. You heal them when you find a path to appreciation of them. Notice he tells his stories in full appreciation of how they served him. Right. That is what we guide all of you to do, to, to look back on whatever has happened in your lives. And it, no matter how traumatic it is labeled from a human perspective, and understand that from an eternal perspective, none of it is traumatic at all. From the energetic realm, you, you can zoom out, if you will, into that energetic realm focus as a human being and reflect back to planet Earth and see that everything that is happening is happening in perfection because all of it, even the most unwanted aspects of it, are creating that expansion, are, are driving the, the collective of humanity to seek relief at some point by no longer focusing on the problem and instead focusing on the solution. You, you touched on the, 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 the racial protests and, and, and the injustices regarding that. Right. That, that sort of bubbled up during these other stressful incidents. Obviously, mm -hmm. it, it, to most of you, those things bubbled up to a greater degree because of the stressors that were already present right. in, in the pandemic and in the economic collapse. Mm -hmm. the, the, the anger around all of that serves a purpose. It's low vibrational energy for sure because there's an outburst of anger regarding something that you prefer as, 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 as not your preference. You've discerned it's not your preference. And the bubbling up of anger is, is what we label step one. That, that anger is step one and, and it's part of the process and it's part of the physical process in a polarized environment. What we have said is step two can go either way. Step two, you can keep yourselves in anger and keep yourselves even in a victim space over it and continue 
causing more, continue attracting more things of that nature and having more things like that continue to happen. And you've seen that on your planet for quite a few earthly years. The change is going to come when the idea of the victimization of it is set aside as something that no longer serves a purpose and sites are set towards solutions, toward improvement, towards something different. The, 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 that will get you out of that cycle of unwanted occurrences that happen in all of your lives in different ways. This is ju- just one example of many things on your planet that keep recurring until you finally solve it. And you actually solve it by digging into how things like that occur, finding appreciation for the contrast that it creates, finding appreciation for the ultimate catalyst that it can be. And then through that positive vibration of appreciation, set your sights toward improvement. Mm-hmm. I also want to ask a question on behalf of my friend Louis D'Souza, who is my co-host on the Monday show. And he has raised this. He's a big follower of Abraham, just totally follows their teaching completely as much as he possibly can in his life. And he's really good at it. Um, the question that he has always wanted to ask them, I want to ask you, and I hopefully we'll get it the way he wants it. <laughs> uh, he wants to know, he, he understands a great deal about how all this, uh, what you just described works, how the expansion works and all that kind of thing. His question is, as far as he can see in his own life, he hasn't contributed anything uniquely him. He's been parroting what other people have said. He has been learning what other people have taught him. He hasn't, from his perspective, he hasn't found his thing that is his contribution to expansion. What do you say to him? The the fact that that one is absorbing teachings of others and absorbing the the collective and filtering it through their own mind and then discussing it is a contribution. That is a contribution. There is a vibrational match to to his set of thoughts and his summation of everything that he has absorbed out there that is going to hear that and connect vibrationally to that and expand in in, in the, the, the vibrational match of it. Just like David was was sharing before we came in that he was very inspired by the Abraham message because it sounded like music to his ears, sounded like what we had been offering him his entire life, mm-hmm. spoken from another human being from a different era, a different generation that he connected with on a very, very high level. That piqued his interest to to continue learning more and more and more about the topics that, that they covered. So the, the one that is saying that they are absorbing and absorbing and absorbing and not giving anything back, it, it, by the fact that they are absorbing and discussing, they are giving back. Okay. And, and if their intention is to share on a higher level, they certainly can detune the fear around that sharing and, and come into full appreciation for the gifts that they truly have to offer. And you all have them. And in that full appreciation and the releasing of fear around it, share a whole new message that was perhaps birthed from all these other messages, but brought together in such a way that they are a collection of thoughts that, that, that are unique to him, but will be a vibrational match to the audience. I, I could ask questions for the next eight hours at least, and then maybe take a break for 10 minutes to ask another eight hours worth. But since we don't have that kind of time, I'm going to ask Daniel, you want to jump in with a question, Daniel? I just think it's hilarious because you're like, Oh, I don't have any questions. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's I, true. I, guess. Hours. I don't need to know that eight hours. We do it's not predict, like, but we predict that there were many, the, the vibration of questions w- w- was very prevalent. <laughs> I think it's part of being a, a host of a show. You, you know that all those questions are there and you're, you're the voice trying to express them on behalf of all your listeners. And it, it becomes so overwhelming. You say, I, I don't have any questions. <laughs> I just don't know what to ask. The mental block, the mental block, just like we have to manifestation. But did you want to ask a question, Daniel? Um, I have one. Someone um, posted in a group today about dealing with mental like chemical imbalances in the body that end up affecting the mental and emotional state and the best thing to do about that so we're not talking about a purely psychological or even an energetical thing we're talking about a chemical imbalance that creates challenges on a day-to-day basis in terms of managing mental and emotional well-being is there anything that you can say to speak to that please 
the 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 foundation of, of teachings such as what we offer in cleaning up your triggers, viewing your transgressors, if you will, very differently, finding a path to appreciating your transgressors and cleaning up emotional triggers. That type of work is beneficial to all humans. And it's very opposite of the vibration that, 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 that is actually a vibration that you're coming out of on planet Earth. We, we, we could speak for a couple of hours just on that. that this, 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 uh, many are calling it the awakening and, and we have no problem with this terminology, but it means many different things to many different people. And the awakening is truly the increasing vibration of humanity coming out of a period of, of, of a society building where you were, you were very much put in a box and in place there and told how to live your lives. Mm -hmm. And many humans obeyed for a very, very long time. And now you're coming out of that. So you're having this awakening period. The, 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 the contrast of the awakening period is that there is great desire for an awakening experience that is not fully being allowed very often based on fear-based teachings that are holding people from, from allowing this full awakening to occur. That mm -hmm. creates a lot of triggers in your lives and, and, and creates a static -y vibration, if you will, that causes a lot of stress and causes a lot of anxiety and ultimately causes physical and mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. the, the chemical imbalance is, is not an inaccurate diagnosis. And if someone has traveled far down the path with something where they have an actual diagnosis, our guidance is always to set a positive intention for the very best outcome, the very best mm -hmm. path and back up and allow that very best path to, to materialize. And that mm -hmm. may indeed include the, 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 the right medical professionals. It may include a, a set of treatments from a medical professional. You have created all of this technology. And, and, and to say that you are, we, we hear some say that they are spiritual beings and, and they are not going to use any of the medical technology that has been created because they're spiritual beings. That is like saying that you're not going to use your currency or that you're not going to utilize the oxygen that's available to you on planet Earth. It is all part of the earthly vibration that mm -hmm. you manifested into by choice, vibrationally. So, so mm -hmm. there are medical treatments and courses of action that are high vibrational for the individual. But when they go into it with fear and go into it not wanting it yes. and not in allowing state, they're going to manifest a, an unwanted path. Whereas if the intention is the very best set of circumstances, the, the vibrational, the high vibrational match of, of professionals and treatments will materialize. Hmm. I love it. I love, I love it. what Abraham has said about different ways to get into that high vibrational place, because clearly that's where it's at. It's, it's being in that space that that's the space of highest allowing where we're able to achieve the things we most want to achieve. And, and I love the fact that you mentioned in a few different ways, how what we would consider to be earthly stuff plays a, an important role in all of that. Because so many people kind of get into their heads the idea that, well, this law of attraction thing, it's kind of like a magic wand that you use to bring things in. But it, it doesn't really apply to my normal life. But it does apply to the normal. It applies to every aspect of life. And, and it I is the source life. of all creation. It is universal law, and, and, and there is no circumventing the law of attraction. You, you are attracting every moment of, of every day, every thought, every circumstance, every condition, and, and you are all getting a mix because you are all in a polarized environment. So your vibration is fluctuating up and down all the time. We are here sharing a set of teachings to give you a set of tools if you so desire to, to reclaim your power over your vibration. You, you have been taught to ignore it. You have been taught to give your power to your government or your religion or, 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 or your bank account or something of that nature. But you all have the power to gain control over your vibration. And you all have the power to rewrite, if you will, your default vibration, meaning whatever you're getting in your lives right now is, is a reflection of your default vibration. And you're all getting some things that you want and some things that you do not. Certainly mm -hmm. some are getting more of the things that they want. They're, they're, they're getting true love. They're getting excellent health. They're feeling good. The wealth is flowing. They're happy day after day after day. You all have examples in your lives of people that are living that way. And you also have examples in your lives who, who everything is, is one problem after the other, one physical ailment, one financial mess, one relationship mess, and, and, and all the way down. 
and and it is all a vibrational set point, if you will, that, that you have created throughout your life. You do not realize you've created it very often, but it's been created by the sum of your experiences. But more importantly, it's been created by your reaction and your perspective of your sum of experiences up until right now. And right now is the time that you, every single person ever hearing this can take to start shifting that default vibration and rewriting it to a different place that's more congruent with the things that they want. But the key to all of this is understanding that reaching a a, a place of world peace and reaching a place of utopia and reaching a place of no problems in your lives whatsoever, it was not your intention when you came here. And and in fact, we have said it before and we will say it again. Utopia is, will be the end of earth. Right. Mm -hmm. The good news is you're nowhere near that right now. (laughs) I think we know that part. (laughs) But that would be the end. And in fact, we, we, we guide you to celebrate everything that's going on on your planet right now because it is this is absolutely a time of awakening on planet Earth. This awakening is not going to result in all of you agreeing with one another, though, because right. you're all here on different paths. And the one that you vehemently disagree with is, is here on their path, living their experience. And when you're all back on the other side, if you will, in your completed state, you will look back without judgment and understand that all of those paths serve a purpose. Which is really phenomenal. I mean, we understand that to a small extent, I think, because uh, once we've lived life for a while, we can kind of look back and see times in our lives that don't really have the same charge, the same sting that they had when they were going on. We look back and say, well, yeah, okay, I kind of learned something from that, or I picked something up, or it set me on a path I didn't expect, but I don't feel that old sting anymore. There are other situations, though, where we do feel that sting. It just It's kind of like that tape that keeps playing in the background and refuses to go away. That becomes a topic that a lot of people address, particularly on social media, when they're trying to learn this stuff, how this law of attraction thing works. So uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to condense about 50,000 questions into one question with about three minutes left in the show. So obviously you can't answer all that in that that small speck of time, but do your best. (laughs) What can we do to deal with the fact that some stuff that's in our background is easy for us to to look back on and say, yes, I can see how all that worked and other stuff just keeps coming back and haunting us. The, 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 that was very much the the dilemma that, that, that David saw himself faced with. And, and, Mm -hmm. and through our guidance and our teachings, he's created this, this, this Taya practice that he now teaches to other people. And it is all about, getting into every aspect of your life and finding a path to appreciation for everything that's ever happened and ultimately getting a place to a place where your vibration, your default vibration is higher. You're getting much more of the things that you want in your life experience, fewer of the things that you do not want. And when you do go down in vibration and manifest something that is of unwanted nature, it instantaneously serves you. It it, it is a magical way to live life, but is actually your original intention in the development of the the intelligence of humanity was much more like the animals of your planet. The the, the animals of your planet get over things very, very quickly. They they do not sit and and tell stories of their traumatic puppyhood. If you will, (laughs) (laughs) you all have the ability to do the same thing. And and, and your intelligence is the thing that is advancing you. And it's also the very thing that is holding you back. There's polarity on all topics. So getting in and finding a path, whether it is our teachings and the Taya practice that David has developed or someone else's, There are different versions of this circulating on your planet at this time, and it's all evolving, and and, and at its best, it is evolving, and at its best, it has evolved beyond what you had just a few years ago, because you're all ready for it now. The, 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 The idea of the book, The Secret, when it came out, David judged it from his ego because he understood that it wasn't telling the whole story. Mm hmm And and, 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 and we swooped in and, and enlightened him to the fact that that book told the story that humanity was ready for at the time that it was delivered. And that's why it was so successful. Right. Mm. Humanity has come to understand by and large on some level that you create your own reality. And that book was a major catalyst of that. Absolutely. Now that you've had 20 some odd years to, to, to bounce that idea around and, 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 and experiment in your lives, you've found that you indeed have this ability to manifest anything that you desire, but then you hit walls and your walls that you hit and these things that need to be healed from your past are absolutely connected. And, 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 and ones like David and Dan and others are, are good at helping individuals connect those dots. And when you connect those dots, 
you go back and start healing these things that actually clear up your what, what we have labeled abundance blocks. And when you clear up these things that are actually triggering you into fear over a topic, suddenly the fear is gone, the negative vibration is gone, the static is gone, and you're free to manifest anything that you want. But from a place of understanding that you're not going to hold in that super high vibrational pattern all the time, nor do you even want to. David has said recently that the best thing about going down is the exciting ride back up. Yeah, boy. I, I can understand and appreciate what Jerry Hicks must have felt when all this first started to happen with him and Esther and with Abraham, because I'm sitting here with about a, a minute left officially in the amount of time we, we allocated for this, wishing I had about 500,000 of those minutes to ask a whole bunch <laughs> of questions. <laughs> this is great. Uh, it's kind of sad to draw it to a close, but all I can think is, boy, we've got to have David back again and have the stream back again, because this has been really fabulous. So I'm going to say thank you to the stream for um, for coming to us and, and answering questions. I'm going to let uh, let you go back and let David come back so we can finish up with him. And while you're doing that, I'm going to remind listeners, this is why we want you to be subscribers. If you're not subscribed, become a subscriber. Uh, the podcast app is very, very close. I've been saying that for weeks now. I know you're probably saying, Walt, shut up, get the damn app out. It's coming. It's coming very, very soon. Um, but in the meantime, make sure that you're subscribed. If you're not sure how to do it, go to the homepage of the website, LOAToday.net. You'll find instructions, instructions on exactly how to do it. And, uh, Daniel, I gotta thank you. I mean, you, you hit a grand slam home run today after hitting two and three run home runs last week. You're, you're on a roll guy. <laughs> he's, he's dusting his fingernails off on his shirt, of course. What can I say? Is that odd? <laughs> is that odd? Or is that God? Or, or is that God? There you go. Okay. I like <laughs> it. I like it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, absolutely fabulous. David, I, I, I hope I gave you enough time there to kind of recollect yourself, but. Yeah, you did. It's, 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 um, you know, a lot of times people want this big statement of them leaving. And, and I think you asked such great questions that a whole lot of message got out there. Uh, it's interesting. I've had two interesting experiences on two days. Yesterday on my live radio show, I had an evidential psychic medium come on and, and interview the stream. Uh -huh. It's a psychic medium stream. And so she asked the stream of the origin of who they were and all that. So I'll have that as my podcast next week. And in the middle of all this, I'm looking out front and I, I have an awareness while I'm channeling, but I step back and really let that step forward. And I'm kind of just out of it. Uh, there's a fire truck and an ambulance and all kinds of stuff going in front of my house and my neighbors right now. So uh, I guess she's okay. They, they took her out That's in an cool. ambulance though, but her head was up. So I guess she's oh, okay. My. Anyway, so yeah, that was all kind of happening while the, the, the stream was here, uh, talking and it was definitely sort of one of those moments that, that we were both present for a moment. Right, right. Wow. Interesting stuff that's just channeling. Usually, I, you know, I kind of just go away and it just happens and it's seeming like there's more integration now. Uh, in the past, um, you know, few months, uh, there's, there's been more, there's times that I'll be talking and all of a sudden it's just coming out. It's, it's really something I, I started off this year talking about, in my opinion, this being the year of clarity because of the, the neatness of the number 2020. It's like 2020 vision. So I've been carrying that theme through and it has really been playing out in ways that I didn't even expect, but the clarity is just growing and growing. So I loved hearing the stream talking about how that expansion, that, that, that vibration is just raising like that. And it's exactly what it feels like. Really yeah, we all, we all feel it. We just don't know exactly what it is. And mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's causing a lot of tension. Oh yeah. Aren't, you know, on this path of at least trying to figure out what it is and they don't know what to do with the tension. And then of course well, it's they, confusing. I mean, it's for most people who don't really understand this, it's got to be really confusing because for, for a lot of people, I mean, take any of the three major issues I brought up when I, when I was questioning the stream, any of them lead a whole lot of people to being absolutely terrified. I mean, fear was absolutely the right description of it. It's a fear-based situation, and the fear has been amplified. So from their perspective, how could this actually be getting better? And mm -hmm. that, that, I yeah. mean, that, that, talk about polarity. There's a polarity right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, One thing, you, know, you talk about the, the people you know, that we talk to, we're excited. You know, this is the best time ever right. uh, from that perspective. But it's, there's going to be some contrast in all of that. And I see people, I, I've lost friendships recently, mm. people who are so angry about politics here in the United States, sure. uh, you know, angry about COVID, angry about masks, and now that's become a political thing. And I've just gotten away from all of it. 
I, I just, you know, I, I don't want any part of any of that stuff because it's all lower vibrational fear-based stuff that I was fine just sort of stepping back and allowing these people that I associated with to sort of uh, ruminate over if they wanted to, but then they insist that you get into it. And they insisted that I get into it at a time when my vibe was down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's something I've been talking about lately that, you know, my vibe dropped a little bit. I had this negative interaction with these friends that were trying to draw me into some stuff that I could care less about being involved in. And I got clarity on the fact that these people aren't really the friends that I thought they were if they're trying to drag me into stuff like that. And that the disconnection that occurred was just an organic thing that serves me ultimately because I don't need any part of that stuff. So that's, that's a good example. If we go down in vibration, we attract something that seems unwanted on the surface. And then we go back up in vibration and look back and realize, wow, that was like a cleaning that I needed. That was like a clearing of, of associations that were not my true vibrational match that I was maybe even forcing a little bit, wow. you know, just out of habit in my life. And it, it served me on such a higher level to shed that stuff. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, well, I have no idea how we're going to accomplish this, but David, somehow you're coming back to the show. I, we, somehow we're going to work. No, that it's been out. fun. I, I know that you're. I can't wait to watch it back. I know your questions. Uh, anytime somebody's very inquisitive and asks new things in new ways, it, it just doesn't end. There's just new thought that comes out, and, and you, more questions, you know, spring from that. And I, I love doing this. I, I absolutely love doing it. So anybody that wants to talk to the stream, uh, I'm always happy to do it. Oh, all right. Well, then that, that's it. You're booked. <laughs> You're coming back. No doubt. We just got to figure out what the date's going to be. Yeah. Let's just set up a date. I'll be happy to come back. You that sounds go. great. Yeah. I, like Daniel said, I, I start off with no questions and oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I found that when people, whenever I do sessions with people, I always tell them to prepare questions because they'll get on with the stream and they'll forget that they have questions. The, the, the vibe changes so much that I think they have to kind of adjust to the vibe for a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then if they have questions today. prepared, they start asking, and then a million more questions always. That, that's a good way of describing it, because when I first was talking to the stream, it was like I, I felt there was a whole bunch of stuff there to bring up, and I had no idea where to begin. So I, I just picked something and went with it, and, of course, that works out, because that's usually what I end up doing anyway on the show. But it, that was quite a place to be at. It, I, I was not used to the idea of not knowing what to say when I had the – this huge amount of things to say. It, it was bizarre. It was great. It was exhilarating, but it was completely outside normal experience. It was fabulous. So, yeah. Anyway. It's yeah, not the first time. That's happened several times before. Before we part company, we got to get some critical details to pass along to listeners. How do they find out about the stream of David and about your website and your book and all that kind of stuff? Sure. Uh, the book is the stream eternal wisdom for a better life. It's available on Amazon. Uh, the show is called the stream of David show on own times radio. And I also have a podcast, the stream of David. Uh, and then the website is the stream of David.com. And if you want to know more about Taya, it's the stream of David.com forward slash T Y A. So Taya stands for trusting your abundance. And it's all about eliminating fear from your life to allow trust. Because when you trust the universe, your abundance flows. Excellent. I love it. I'm going to make sure we include links to all of those in the description. So anyone listening to uh, the podcast, you can just click right over. David, oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. You just, I I mean, I thought we were lifting Daniel's vibe. I had no idea mine was going to rise this high. And this is great. I'm sure it's true for a lot of fun. And thank you, Dan, for inviting me. Dan's fantastic. I, I could spend hours and hours and hours every day just talking to Dan. Daniel is amazing. He, he, every once in a while will go off on a thing that just seems so casual to him. And Alex and I will sit back and like dumbfounded, like, Oh my God, where is this coming from? <laughs> depth upon depth upon depth upon depth. I love people like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and Daniel's smiling. That, that means I know his, his vibe really did rise as high as he wanted. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good. Daniel. I, I literally yeah, this felt channel this- vibe is a good vibe, right? It's a really good vibe. Uh, the, the, there was this palpable shift. Just as if the sheep said, we are here, I felt this. Yes. Yeah, I felt that yeah. too. That was mm. pretty wild, wasn't it? I didn't it's, know what to label that. Yeah. It's a, it sometimes, because uh, David hops on Facebook now and then, but it's, and every now and then I'll just happen to be on Facebook just when he's, he's doing his live. Of course. And always exactly what's going on with me that day or exactly what I needed to hear or exactly what you did. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. It's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. 
It is good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sad to draw the program to a close because uh, it's been really great. But David, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insights and sharing the stream's insights. And by God, we're going to book you on real soon. <laughs> it was a real joy being here. Thank you both again very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, especially to our podcast listeners. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Bye, everybody. Bye.